Right, to talk about uh, quite a number of these legal issues, we're joined by legal expert Pete Duplitsi, who is the director of law firm BDK Attorneys. He joins us now. Very good evening to you, and thank you so much for speaking to us. So, uh, quite a bit to get through, but I'd like to just start with the uh, trial date for Zandile Gumete, the uh, former Etegwini member, and her 21 co accused. So, that has been said, but I want to hear your thoughts around the fact that there were arguments around where the trial itself should take place, whether it should be the Durban High Court or the Peter Maritzburg one. Uh, why is that important? Well, I uh, didn't follow the matter uh, very closely, so I'm not aware of that argument. But okay. uh, um, the uh, both seats of the High Court in... Uh, KZN may hear the matter. Uh, at some instances, it may be important uh, to uh, be uh, close to the witnesses uh, or uh, where the matter actually originated, where it happened. There could be several reasons, okay. but um, it is not really important. Um, it may be heard in Durban or in Peter Maritzburg or, in fact, in any uh, circuit court for that matter. All right, but the importance of the trial itself, it's been uh, a long in coming with various, uh, you know, delays, and we've just mentioned that both parties have now confirmed that all the documents pertaining to the trial have been received. But why do you think it's an important trial? And of course, this happens against various political entry that we're uh, seeing in the country with regards to the governing ANC. And we'll get, that, get into that in just a moment. But just share your initial thoughts about the importance of this trial. Well, um are we now talking about the trial itself or the pre-trial issues which is being sorted out? The because trial you have itself. to distinguish between, between the two. The trial itself, because as you say, the pre-trial matters seem to be concluded. It's as far as the, you know, um, the, you know, the sound isn't very good, but uh, as far as... Uh, the pre-trial issues are concerned, I believe the matter is uh, set down for the 20th for that purpose, 20th of June, and the trial will be proceeding on uh, the 18th of July to the 31st of August. Now, uh, it is important uh, to avoid any delays, like for instance in Mr. Zuma's matter, uh, that uh, all these issues be sorted out, that it is ensured that uh, all the accused have legal representation, that their legal representatives are available during that period, that issues like disclosure of the case docket had been done, uh, further particulars had been requested, um, it has to be established how the matter could be curtailed, for instance, by uh, the making of admissions by agreement between the parties. So all those issues have to be addressed before the 18th of July. So come the first day of the trial, everyone is ready and the matter mm. can just proceed to plea and the first witness be called. Okay. As I said, and I'll speak up, Mr. Duplessis, is that this occurs against a background of political intrigue. And I'll mention just one, but a few of issues to make the case. I mean, uh, we've just heard a political analyst now say that it would seem that the NPA is open to prosecuting matters that would please the powers that be. This is against the backdrop of the NPA saying that it has uh, no grounds at this point to charge President Cyril Ramaphosa with the allegations against him. Uh, we have the former Secretary General of the ANC who's accused the MPA of being malleable to manipulation, saying it seems to cherry-pick its cases and only prosecute certain people. What are your thoughts around this? 
No, uh, look, I have a very great respect for our legal system. Uh, I have no reason to believe that uh, that is the situation. We all know what the national uh, prosecuting uh, policy um, is and uh, what factors should be taken into consideration. It should be an, an objective uh, approach by the NPA to the matter. Um, it uh, does, as, as it is said, without fear or favor to any party. The only question is whether the evidence in the case docket establishes a case prima facie against the accused. And on that basis, and objectively so, and uh, rationally so, the decision is taken whether to prosecute or not. Um, and um, if, if uh, any other factors uh, play in on the decision, that is simply wrong. Um, but, uh, you know, to simply say that it is, for instance, politically motivated um, is not good enough. Uh, if you can establish proper reasons as to why you say the decision wasn't properly and objectively and rationally taken, then you can take that point in court. Mm. I... Um, as far as President uh, Ramaphosa is concerned, I believe that that case is still in the very early stages of investigation. It hasn't even been, if I'm correct, submitted to the NPA for a decision. So there cannot be a decision as yet. So once that is, uh, the, the uh, docket uh, is uh, uh, properly investigated, uh, it is then only submitted to the NPA uh, for a decision. Uh, and at that stage, only the NPA will look, it, uh, look at it, as I say, objectively and rationally and decide, is there a case against the president or not? Okay. And uh, if, if there is a case for him to answer, if there are reasonable grounds to prosecute, then the matter will proceed. If not, I'd like they, to look at uh, one or two things. Prob probably they will decline to, to prosecute. I I'd like to look at some things, Mr. Duplessis. I mean, uh, over the years, we have certainly seen an, an admission by the NPA itself about its lack of capacity. And it's judged within this malaise of uh, the number of successful verdicts and the people who've been sentenced. But most importantly, there's been a criticism about this issue of justice delay. So let's use the Senzo Miwe case as an example, for instance. It certainly has tested the patience of many South Africans who've asked questions about why it's taken so long. Are there merits to these arguments? There's now the issue of uh, two dockets that's come before the courts. The defense is arguing about jurisdiction. There have been uh, questions around why certain people have not been charged. So is it about the optics of the NPA? Or do, are, are you saying that they are not to a point at which they deserve the level of criticism where its integrity is questioned? Yes, well, surely, uh, um, uh, you know, no system uh, is faultless. Um, and uh, there, there uh, is reason for criticism for... Uh, decisions which had been made in the past, surely. Um, and uh, furthermore, there are many delays, but let me assure you, I'm on the defense side. Uh, sometimes I have watching briefs uh, where I uh, cooperate with the state. So I know the system from both sides. And uh, there are many reasons why a case could be delayed. And um, it's not always at the door of the defense, sometimes on the door of the prosecution or the police. 
Um, yes, uh, in, in this case of Senzo Miyiwa, it seems as if it had been unduly delayed. There's uh, talk of two dockets. Um, that I find very strange, I must say. If you have a docket being investigated by one investigating team, and then five years later, you all of a sudden have a second docket, which is now being investigated by a totally different team, if I understand uh, those facts to be uh, correct, then uh, it surely uh, raises eyebrows. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a strange situation. But uh, the defence are totally uh, uh, within their rights to demand access to that second docket. They uh, may peruse it. There may be evidentiary material in that docket, which could be very useful uh, for them in cross-examination, for instance, during that trial. Well, thank you so uh, but much. But yes, it is, uh, I must say, the case was unduly delayed, that is so, and this situation around the second docket seems to me to be very strange. Thank you so much for your time. Legal expert Pete Duplessis, director of law firm BDK. And if you just look at the strategic panel of the National Prosecuting Authority, it says it's basing its strategy on four pillars, professionalism, accountability, credibility, and most of all, independence. So we wait and see as events unfold against the criticism level.